On September 29th, three world titles are on the line in three different sports. One epic night for women's martial arts. Steph Fairtex is something else. Ham is a beast. Two world champions. It's insane. It's insanity. Here comes Kelly. That is sheer awesomeness. One fight night 14. Stamp versus Ham on Prime Video. And now, Brandon Six Boys All the way from New York. I told you I want to. I want to jump on the plane and come out to Calabasas just for for my dumbass. All the way from New York, and then you got to fly from here. Is, are you going straight from here to Singapore? No, I'm going back home. Going and to. And I'm going to Singapore on and, Sunday night. And then you go, yeah, because you got a you got a big fight next Saturday. Yeah. Big fight. Ne- he, uh, Would it be next Friday, Saturday, Saturday for me? No, it'll be, be Friday for you. Friday, Friday for me. Okay, gotcha. Saturday morning. And for those that don't know, this is Daniel Kelly, one of the most uh, you, you, talented badasses on the planet, especially at 115 pounds in the I women's guess division. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Forget women's division, just overall. Leg lock specialist, face of one championship. You're actually competing for a world championship in jiu jitsu on the one platform, which is a big deal, very big deal. Especially, you look at the progression of jujitsu and as far it's come, like if you had told me five years ago that they'd have, let alone a you know a male and Mikey Mushimeshi competing for a world championship on major network TV on Amazon, let alone a woman at 115 pounds, I'm like, you're crazy, but look how far it's come. Yeah, um, I'm actually, I competed for one a year ago as like the first women's grappling match. And then this will be the first women's title for 115. It's it's called Adam weight. So Adam like Adam weight yeah. in the U.S. it's it's considered like 105, but for uh, one championship it's like 105 to 115. Uh-huh. So yeah, it's it's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. I think it's cool too because jujitsu. You know, now it's I mean you're a professional jujitsu player. Pretty much. You, like, yeah, that's what you are. Like how dope is that? Like you can make a living doing jujitsu. Yeah, because like, when I started, I started like when I was like ten and. Um, ten. Yeah. We'll oh, get I to did karate that. first. If you want to count nine years old, but from karate to jujitsu, um, when I started, like women's jujitsu, about and MMA fighting wasn't known. It wasn't popular. It was hard to even for women to get fights. Like. You're probably just training with a bunch of uh, boys, I assume. Yeah, the majority. I, yeah, I. Uh, Especially coming from like a Philly school, like that was my first school. I was like, you know, imagine a 10, 11 year old me going against kids who are like 16, 17. Like there was barely any girls in my class. That's why you're so good. Yeah. I had to learn pretty early at a young age. Some rough, some rough learning lessons against dudes all the time. Oh yeah. And like when I started to get older, like 16 years old, 17, then we'll go against guys who like had to prove a point. It was, yeah. Philly's yeah. pretty brutal. Yeah. Guys in general can be <laughs> brutal. Yeah. yeah. But so I, I think what's fascinating is now, you know, I have two young boys. If they wanted to make a living jiu-jitsu, it's actual possibility now. Oh, like yeah. with Mikey Mushimeshi, we had him uh, in studio. And he's like, I don't have to do anything else. Because I was like, hold on. If you're tied to one championship, you can't mm-hmm. compete in all these other, you know, IBJF, F, all that stuff. You can't compete in, you know, Eddie Bravo's invitation. I actually think that's pretty cool. Like, just for me, because I can focus on one person. That's what I'm saying. It's great. You know, if I compete every other month or weekend, my opponents in my bracket could study me or their coaches, yeah. and I could get injured more. Whereas, you know, for this one especially, all my focus is on one person, and my training's been it's yeah, better than usual. It's, for, it's like you're a professional, yeah, which you are. Yeah, pretty much. And Mikey, <laughs> Mikey was like, yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah. You mean you're getting paid and you're a professional, so you mm-hmm. don't have to fly around you yeah, know, all over the United States known. and compete? Like, no. People, like, you know, if it was now, if it was like back in like 2008 or 2010, you have to go shift to MMA to make money or get like get stuff. Or yeah, that's why there. that's why I think it's good, too, because like Goran Ryan's talked about Mikey Mushimeshi's talked about, you know, these are guys who make seven figure livings doing just jujitsu. And they're like, yeah, I want to do MMA. I'm like, why? Yeah. Why would you want to do that? I don't that, want to get dude? punched in the face. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, nor should well, eventually, you. Eventually. But I mean, for now, like I love what I do. So I just want to focus on jujitsu. Yeah, whenever I hear the, these top dogs in jiu-jitsu go, ah, you know, I want to trickle over to MMA, I'm like, it back, again, to your point, five years ago, yeah, it makes sense, you need the money. But now, if you well, become especially for dominant. a girl, like, back then, you, you know, my old coach, like, 
at the time he didn't want me to do MMA, um, but I wanted to do it like uh, eventually just because I was getting bullied. But he was just saying that at the time, you know, if I want to do MMA, I'm not going to get far. You know, women's MMA isn't going to be popular unless you're like in Strike Force. That's when like. Or before Strike Force, I think Gina Carano was like coming out. Gina was big in Strike Force. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you had uh, Gina Carano, very few you had girls. Cyborg, very and then Ronda, Misha Tate, and mm -hmm. Strike Force, and then obviously the UFC uh, bought them and kind of took over. Yeah. So. But now they I mean, the girls are kicking ass. Oh yeah, they're yeah, the talent. Like you can just tell too. Like if you watch like a lot of the fights, like the uh, their techniques and everything has like progressed. Whereas like back then, like I feel like they're catching up with the guys. And, you know, the guys are, like, still, like, years ahead of the girls. Yeah, I'd say girls are probably – certain ones. Not in general. I'd say as a whole, probably five years behind, mm -hmm. five to eight years behind the, the men as far as, the, you know, one through 15. But there's, like, the top five in every division in the UFC, like Shevchenko, mm -hmm. Grasso, like Rose, Andrade, uh, uh, Cortez, Tracy Cortez. Like, those girls are just – as talent they're like oh, their yeah. techniques are very similar to the to the dudes yeah which is impressive but yeah you, for the most part you know some of the women's division still in leather helmets of this is football you know yeah. like they're just <laughs> like either they're specialist or they don't have a complete kind of um repertoire as far as the guys go but they're they're getting there like there's yeah. some monsters yeah I, I mean recently too like i mean i'm a grappler so i still study jiu-jitsu matches but i like i enjoy watching like mma fights and especially the girls but you can just tell, at least like the ones I trained with, you can just tell like who's like kind of behind or who's like ahead, you know, just like the top women's top 10 or top five. If you put like a number nine with a number, like number four, sometimes the number nine is like way ahead of the yes. number four. Like that's just how, you know, up and down women's, you know, fighting. But you've is. also competed against some big UFC names as well. Yeah, and I, and I trained with some, yeah. <laughs> yeah so you but again, I don't think, and for the common like fan of jiu jitsu or UFC, I don't think they realize like when you have a jiu jitsu specialist, when it's like all you do, like we used to have Braylo uh, Estima come in, uh, Hodger Gracie, um, the Bushesha would come in and roll with oh, us. Yeah, and yeah. and we're, a lot of us are black belts, and we're like, oh, dude, this is, how much different can it be? I and mean, you just tie us in knots. You know, it hurt I your feelings. I think it's different though. Like if you have a good balance of striking and grappling, if you know how to wrestle and use the cage, I feel like the striker. If it's straight MMA, yeah, we can do our thing. But when it's if they're Actually, if it's straight BJJ yeah. no gi even gi forget about it but if it's straight BJJ and they're like yeah whatever you want to do I mean like Gordon Ryan toys I toys feel like with, with these girls guys. MMA I mean like this isn't hating on like their jiu-jitsu or anything but you can just tell like some of them most of them don't know how to use jiu-jitsu in fights they know how to like wrestle like, a lot of people are, a lot of girls wrestling now is more popular than it was before so they know how to wrestle but when it gets to the ground you can just kind of tell. You they can tell, yeah, the transitions. They don't know what like Mackenzie Dern's a, a, a good one that comes from your, but your background. But that's another thing, savage. too. She's a good example. Great grappler. You think she's winning her fights, but, you know, her last, like. Um, she fell in love with the striking. Yes, like with the Chinese fighter. I, I don't know how to say her name. Uh, Jiang. Oh, uh, Wei, Wei Lei? No. Um, it's another one. She, she just she lost to Carla, but McKen she, she beat Mackenzie. Oh, re recently. Yeah, she's a yeah. Chinese fighter. Yep. I forget her name. But her, uh, Marina Rodriguez, you know, do you think, like, they were getting kind of beat up, like, with the jiu-jitsu, but they're striking and know how to use the cage and wrestling. They they beat McKenzie. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, women's, like, fighting is still, like, going. It's progressing, but um, I feel like they're still trying to catch up because they don't know how to, like, balance. It'll between. get there. Yeah. It'll get there. Whereas so the guys, it's like, you know. Because little girls need they need heroes like yourself. They need yeah. heroes like Rose. They need people to look up to because they see you guys setting the path. Like, oh, that's possible when mm -hmm. before it was impossible. Yeah, you know. But for those of you that don't know who Daniel Kelly is, uh, Casey, play the freaking highlights so people can educate themselves. And I know it's awkward to watch yourself, but these are pretty good highlights. And and she was a samba. What are you talking about? World champ here? Yes. And here you can't pull guard anymore. And then you transition to the back, mm -hmm. choke her out. Yeah, it's it, like an old school one. Like a lot of, uh, I actually learned this when I was like 12, like when guys would just pull on my neck from my guard. Um, and I would just use that to like go around the back. To trans transition yeah. and get to their back, yeah. You're all smiling. I actually, you know what's funny is I don't, uh, I don't really smile on purpose. I think it's just my face. It's just your face? That's like, a good thing. At least you're not frowning. Like maybe 
you know, if I'm trying to squeeze and my mouth's just open, like I don't really notice that I'm smiling. Yeah, it looks like you're smiling. And then I look crazy. Well, I am crazy, but I just look crazy than I do. But and you'd yeah. rather have that than have like a weird sad face. Yeah, yeah. Can't That's good. Me. We'll we'll play the whole thing for the fans so they can educate themselves. <laughs> Most of them already know who you are. But uh, you, you have your big match for us. It's next Friday for you. It'd be Saturday because it's in mm -hmm. Singapore, which is across the freaking planet. Yeah. Uh, tell me about your opponent. You guys have uh, fought before. Yeah, we, it's actually just this, a con. This Feb yes, this February coming up or next one. Um, it's gonna be like three years since we competed. And she's a IBJ FF uh, gold medalist. Yes, she just won. Uh, worlds recently so she's pretty yeah. good yeah. Oh, yeah look at you yeah okay. <laughs> but, but that's what i'm saying like now that jujitsu is there there's a path to being a professional like people have you're realize, a straight professional yeah. she's still competing that where you don't have to have no, those. she's considered professional no 100 percent, she is especially if she's competing against you and she's done it before but i'm just saying you don't have to go that traditional route no. of winning those other tournaments to be yeah, considered back then it was a big deal you had to, to like yeah adcc now, yeah now, like, people IBJ. don't understand. I mean, I'm like, I take her seriously. Like, you're a world champion. Like, you're beating girls who are, like, trying to get the title. Like, they worked hard for it. But it's like, nowadays, you know, titles don't really mean anything anymore. Like, you know, I train with girls who have either placed in ADCC trials, who fought girls who won, who won uh, world championships at other promotions, and they, and they beat them. So I feel like nowadays, like, people are so stuck on, like, Tight. Well, it's still a big thing. Like it's a big they, deal. Like, yeah, they're legit. Like yeah. you know, that's really awesome. But you know, I going into this match, I don't. You know, that's those things don't really matter to me. Do you do you ever feel like you need to check those boxes in order to get validation from the jujitsu community, or do I you even like, care? I don't really care. Because um, if you I go out and to. choke her out and get that strap, which is you know like what's thirty-five funny? pounds or seventeen pounds or something like that, how how heavy is the one championship belt? It's, heavy. it's too heavy. Yeah. I, 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 it's too big. DJ had trouble holding yeah, it. Yeah, I had trouble holding it. It's too heavy. Uh, Chachi, it's too heavy. Lighten it up. But, um, I mean, if you get that strap, none of that other stuff matters. Yeah, no, that's that's why I've like been fo I've been so focused for like for this camp, for this match, and especially like, you know, in writing, she's more accomplished than me. So beating her and getting this title would like basically, you know, check my box. Like I'm the world champion. You're good. Yeah, and it's in a cage, so I feel like that's more, like, legit. Whereas, you know, where and how I grew up in jiu-jitsu, like, you're kind of, like, in the mat. Like, if you go out of bounds, they reset you either the same position or some tournaments are different. Like, they'll reset you but make you stand back up and give the other person points or however, like, you reset it from the position. Um, but, yeah, this is this is pretty exciting for me. And, uh, yeah, hell yeah, it is. And I think, too, being in one championship and there's a title on the line, it's different where you're not going to, you know, sit on your butt, scoot your butt. Scoot. You don't want to win just off points. So I actually said this before, like, yeah, people like the casual person, like especially like casual MMA fans, you know, when you're watching a jiu-jitsu match, most times you're probably like, oh, why are they just sitting on their butt? Be like, just get up or this is boring. But to like a person, like a hot jiu-jitsu hobbyist or competitor, you know, they understand what's going on. So I feel with how one championship with these matches, they make you be more aggressive. They make you stand up, go for a takedown, use the cage. It makes the match exciting yes. for the casual. Whereas, you know, other matches, people don't really understand what's going on. But like me and you kind of understand like what they're trying to do, the technique, their strategy. Yeah, I get it. But uh, but I think, too, like that's why one championship signed you. I think that's why you're in the position you're in. Mm -hmm. I think that's why Mikey uh, Mushimeshi's in the position he's in. We go you guys, for the kill. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to be a tough sell, man. Yeah. It just <laughs> is. Like if they're just skewing their butt and it's always, you know, decisions Actually, and points, too, it's like, tough. If you watch like past matches, uh, I believe it was the first U.S. card um, with, uh, I'm probably going to say his name wrong, Dan Ritter. Ritter or something. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. The, Dan in the Ritter jiu versus Ty Rotolo. Rotolo, yeah. yeah. He, I was there for that. You know, yeah. a lot of people, like, I thought Ty was just going to submit him. He, he did really well against him. But just, like, certain strategies that, you know, a strictly MMA guy who has, like, basic, decent jiu-jitsu against a really high-level jiu-jitsu guy like Ty and his brother, you know, he was able to kind of hold off a lot of submissions and takedowns because... Because you're not play. playing the game. Yeah. And you're talking, like... I'm not, I don't want to say I started that blueprint, but I was in Meta, Meta Morris and went against Cyborg, who's just strictly jiu-jitsu. Oh, jeez. And I had my black belt. <laughs> yeah, I went against Cyborg, and he couldn't submit me. I went in his guard. I did all – just because I didn't play his game. Now, for the traditional jiu-jitsu fan, they hated it. So mad at me. 
that's the game. Like, we can figure it out. Like, as long as you have some high-level understanding of jiu-jitsu and where the traps are, you can be able to figure it out. Yeah, I kind of Because you're not playing that. the game. Yeah, I learned that in my last match. I did catch weight in Thailand um, under one, and uh, she – it was in the ring. It was in a cage, but – um, she literally knew how to use the rules and like the ring against me. So it's frustrating. I a, yeah, I had a rude awakening at one point, but then I ended up beating her. So yeah, Cyborg's dad came up to me and was like, "What? Are, what, what is it? You know?" He's <laughs> like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "Sorry, man, got paid." Yeah, like, this was the plan, not None to get Morris submitted. Isn't around anymore, right? No, yeah, no, no, that was fun though. Yeah, it was the same card as like me, Mackenzie Dern. Um, oh, that was before she was fighting. Yeah. Oh wow, that's wow. yeah. She was a little badass. Yeah, hot second. And you're a black belt. Black belt. Yeah. How many degrees? Uh, just one. Oh, same. Yeah, ju uh, yeah, <laughs> just one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, just one. But uh, with, with your opponent, and and she's aggressive too. That's why it's a good matchup. You know, that's why yeah. I think because like uh, Mikey came on, I think the week before uh, he competed in Denver, and you know he ended up submitting the guy, and he's like, you know, the pressure's on me to make this exciting for the casual fans, and the same pressure's on you. Not that there's not pressure already, but yeah, there's you know there's always pressure, but I feel like. I mean, I gotta do what I have to do to, to win the match. I know 100%. she's gonna. I know she like she's able to study my matches, like how I use the cage or the ring. Mm -hmm. So you know, if I'm a little, if I'm overly aggressive, she can counter that. Like I've been studying her like every day, so I kind of, you know, if I really good jujitsu person, if I just leave anything open, she's gonna be able to like take it. So and 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 going back to your your roots, so your your parents dropped you off at the jujitsu gym. How how this start? So. Yeah, um, I moved from Philly, like the city, to like the suburbs. Like uh, I don't know if you're familiar with like Pennsylvania, but I moved like in Abington. It's, okay. Like, Bucks County. It's like a really big area. Um, and uh, brothers, sisters. Is I, just I have two older brothers. So two older brothers, you, mom, and pop, move out to Pennsylvania. My oldest brother lives in Florida. Like gotcha. He's, he's like my half brother. But gotcha. My full brother. Um, yeah, he lived with me. Okay, carry on. Um and. I so the school that I went to it was from sixth grade to ninth grade it was a big junior high and I started like one month in as being the new kid I was getting bullied by like the big girls who were like in eighth grade and ninth grade and the was, warlocks yeah yeah I, <laughs> I was um yeah I was probably like 65 70 pounds at the time like I was <laughs> so small I was so yeah small, I was yeah. um yeah I was they're like shoving me lockers and stuff Huh? Were they like shoving you in lockers? Uh, no, but you know, it came to a point where like you know they were, you know they kids were kids are like, mean, fun. man. Yeah, back no, back then it was they were mean. Now it's I'd say it's worse now because of social media. So imagine you get well, bullied at school like now, and then on coming home and then you're well, still getting bullied. People were accepting, so I feel like it's more easier now than back then. Back then it was brutal. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, it was it was a bad time for me. Like I had bushy eyebrows. Like I always got called caterpillars and. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> Caterpillar, it's not too It was bad. bad, but yeah, these girls would follow me at home sometimes, and then I would be. It was to a point where I got scared to go to school. And so, did you tell your mom and dad? You're like, ah, I don't want to go. Yeah, and my mom, like as crazy as she was, like she wanted to like visit the school and like. I'm like your mom. Yeah. Yeah, and but the thing is, like, you know, you, these parents, you, they can do. They try to like push the principals or the school districts like hey my kids getting bullied are you guys gonna do something about it? they're not doing can only, well you can only do so much you know yeah even um, the principal's like yeah i don't she has to stick up for herself but it's like, like these nine it's like eighth graders and ninth graders picking on a sixth grader yeah it's you know, not it's, right um so with long story short i i would say like around october or november that year in sixth grade i I like came home one day. I just remember telling my dad like I don't want to go to school anymore. Like I'm getting bullied, whatever. And um, my dad went on Google, like looked up like self defense schools because back then no one really knew like jujitsu schools. It was like kung fu, karate. Yes. So yeah. I think that's what he looked up. He looked up another karate school because I in Philly I did karate. Shout out so, to dad though. I get yeah. it, man. Just googling like <laughs> what can I do? Um, this is when we had the Google Maps. You just yeah. printed out and. Um, Luckily, it was it was called like self defense. Uh, I'm not gonna say like my old school's name, but it was like a self defense school. And my dad said like I should go there, you know, check it out. And he wanted me to be involved in something too, like stay active yeah, and make friends because I was a new kid. So thank you, Dad. Um, then I uh, my mom took me to that school uh, like that Friday. I just made it on time because like it was still new because I can tell like not many kids were signed up and like it was like mixed. So it was like little the little warriors with the junior warriors and some adults and this is all karate at that time 
No, it's a jiu-jitsu. The jiu-jitsu. Okay, yeah. Carry so on. when I walked in, um, you know, my co- my mom like I had like a really bad speech, so I couldn't really talk to my coach at the time. So like my mom explained to him like, hey, like my daughter is being bullied. She's new. Um, is there you know can can we? Uh, what work can you do? Yeah. yeah. So he, I originally wanted to strike. So that's why, you know, I actually, actually, I went ahead of myself. Before, I looked up, like, who Gina Carano was, who uh, a lot of these, like, old, like, fighters, old school fighters, like, when I saw Forrest Griffith and the other guy. And Stephen very Bonner. Fun. Yes. Yeah. I saw that first fight with my dad, and that's how, like, I started to get into the sport. I love it. But I didn't know anything about jiu-jitsu. All I know was, oh, I want to do fighting stuff. Yeah. That's how I explained it. And you're so, in Philly, which is known for their, you know, deep, deep roots in, was, in boxing as well. Yeah. Crunk's gym's out boxing. there. You got, you got Bernard Hopkins. Eddie Alvarez actually had a gym at the time called Fight Factory. Yep. It was like a good 10 minutes from where I was training. The Underground at. Kings right up, the, yes. right up the street. Eddie, yeah, Eddie's my boy. So I thought I was getting into that because, like, I was like, yeah, like, I want to strike i kept saying yeah i want to start fighting because you want to so, punch these warlocks yes in the face. that's basically yeah. what i said and then my coach at the time was like all right uh let's get you into jujitsu first and i said like what's jujitsu and he basically explained you know if you get to the ground if some if these big girls ever get you to ground you'll be able to defend yourself and i was kind of like stubborn and i was like all right fine like i whatever got into my first jiu-jitsu class uh gi or no gi i was in the gi so Perfect. yeah so i was in the gi um I was really awkward. I had sweatpants on and the gi top. It was like my child class. Yeah. Come on, so, mom. Um, I was an awkward kid. I was wearing gray sweatpants and a, gi- a big gi top. And the first day, he showed like a few techniques, showed me what an arm bar was, what a rear naked choke was, and then put me into the sparring class. Love like, it. 15 minutes, uh, the last 15 minutes of it. And my first, uh, there was like one other girl that was like kind of my size. I was like maybe a year older than her. I wrecked her. Like yeah. shook hands and I just did like basic all that anger yeah, yeah i did like the basic you know pull the gi down yeah to go around the uh, head i spun around i don't even know how i knew this as a which kid. is crazy being that young yeah doing that first day because i he showed me like running like a choke so i just think all right i get behind her back i choked him right away so that's what i did uh i pulled the collar down went around behind her back choked her um and i went against a boy he was like my size or like he was a little bigger took him down Stayed him out, and I just remember arboring him. And Damn. And ever since that day, I just fell in love with it. You loved it since then? Yeah. And then when you went home, and then did you have to use any of it against these warlocks at school? Um, Not that year, but the the in eighth grade, I had to, yeah. Yeah, what's up now? And yeah. how'd that go? No, um, well, you would think they would stop, but, like. Damn, the, the relentless. Well, if you fight their friend, then their friend, like, wants to fight you, and then. It's a tournament, basically. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. But, and then girls are just really, they want to prove a point. Yeah. So, but I was able to like defend myself once and I beat her, but I got in trouble. But then my dad that day took me to Dunkin' Donuts to kind of like reward me. So, same thing here. Yeah, your parents yeah. are great. Your parents yeah. are great. Yeah, same and thing. And then um, I went to like another new school, um, sophomore year to senior year. It was like more like the rich area school. And those people are really mean. Like, I had like everyone, I feel like every school I went to, like, there was like a lot of bullies or something. It's tough um, just being a new kid. Like, you know, it's like the school. So, like, I feel like the last Abington was more like kids were more aggressive. And then you had the the new school I went to. They were just all like they, just beat, talk. they beat you. They beat you down here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, actually, I was in junior. It was my junior year. I had to take like a senior class um, because I guess like when I switched schools, I had to like take a higher science class. So I was in the science class with like seniors and. I had like a little incident like that day. I remember because like this girl kind of shoved me in the bathroom. I'm like, why did you shove me? And I was like this awkward kid. So like I was just looking confused and she took it as like, why are you looking at me like that? So she did that and I kind of said, like I just defended myself. Like, sure. like why are you being mean? I was a kid. So like I, it sounds cringe now, but I was just like, why are you have to be so mean? And then her friend thought I was like trying to pick on her. So then her friend followed me to my science class that day because like I was in a senior class. So I guess like she had friends there. Oh, actually, my brother was in my class, too, and he witnessed this whole thing. <laughs> um, so, But he didn't defend me because he was really quiet. And yeah, that's you guys like are shy. Thing. He's really shy, yeah. yeah. Um, so that day, like, I remember being in science class, and uh, she kept staring me down from the hallway. And I remember my science teacher had to go out to, like, talk to someone or something. It was weird. And um, she walked into my classroom, and, like, Right when she put her bag down, I like started just I put my bag down and then I just learned how to do a level change, double legged her and Hell then just yeah. started And nobody messed with you after that. No one did, nope. 
and then yeah. n- n- now you're about, to be, I, now you're about had, to be a world you know, champion. Yeah. So like you know, especially like with bullying um, and like being where I'm at right now, like I want to like you know I feel it's really important to like I don't want my kids to be raised or um, whenever I have kids, but you know being a certain being that com- like uncomfortable position where they don't know if they should defend themselves or Correct. not. Correct. And you know I feel like with a lot of bullying that's going on, I feel like you know there might be in a tough situation and you know, how they're going to defend themselves. You want them to have the tools. If yeah. they, you don't want to be bullies, but if, if things like, pop off. Like, don't wait off, for them to hit, like, correct. If, they're, if they're bothering you, like, shut that down. Yep, that's right away. Best, that's Nip the best it in answer. the butt right away and then move on to somebody the, else. Oh, just ignore them. Nope, this, that, that doesn't like, work. No. That doesn't no. work. Trust me, it doesn't work. Yeah. And so I, I tried cool. every tool to, like, I didn't want to fight just because I learned self-defense, just because I, I was competing. I didn't want to mm. use it because, you know, I even as a kid, I knew, like, what I could do because I felt like I was more experienced, obviously, but... There's also a confidence you give off a yeah. confidence too, and oh, the kids I are like, oh, damn. yeah, yeah." Think about it. If you could uh, talk to your mama now, it's like you go back to that first class and you're in sweats and a gi top, choking out. You know, <laughs> you'd, be, and you'd be like, "Mama, a few near, years from now, I'm gonna be world champ." She How actually cool wanted that? me to quit at one point because she felt it was during a time where women weren't, you know, they weren't making as much money as the guys. they they weren't getting as much the respect and attention. I get it. So, I mean, I understand, like, where she was coming Me from, too. but... And then did you did you go on to college or right out of high school? Just I, uh, jiu-jitsu was the path. Yeah, I, um, I went to college because my mom made me. I went to community college in Philly, and then uh, stuff happened, so I kind of just stopped. And then I refocused into jiu-jitsu, and here I am. Made the move. Yeah. Made the move. Shout it was to, hard. It shout was... to mama and pops for starting yeah. jiu-jitsu. Yeah. I know yeah. they're not with us, you know. Yeah. And we, okay. we don't have to talk about that, but I'm sure they're proud as shit. Yeah. 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 And come next Friday, it's gonna be a big deal for oh, you. Oh yeah, yeah, can't wait. Well, we're looking forward to your fight next Friday. It's on Amazon Prime. One championship, Jessica Khan, you for the world title yeah. from sweats and a gi to a freaking gold belt. <laughs> Thank you for yeah. flying all the way out here. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Great kicks. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. those are dope. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, a lot of them. Appreciate Thank you. you. On September 29th, three world titles are on the line in three different sports. One epic night for women's martial arts. Stan Fairtex is something else. Ham is a beast. Two world champions. It's insane. It's insanity. Here comes Kelly. That is sheer awesomeness. One fight night 14. Stamp versus Ham on Prime Video.